They like the darkness. Natalie Briggs didn't like spiders. In fact, she hated them. From little money spiders to big ass black widows creeping into the country in bunches of bananas or lying in wait behind reinforced glass in zoos and safari parks, she hated them. She hated the way they scuttled sideways across the floor and how they made their webs in the darkest corners and how they leapt out at her with their spindly hairy legs and their evil eyes. In short, Natalie Briggs was an arachnophobe. Penny from the office hated spiders too, but her hatred was in a different league. Penny would attack them with a rolled up newspaper. Natalie needed light artillery. Have you tried conkers? Natalie had asked after an arachnid in the bathroom had given Natalie a sleepless night. It might just be an old wives tale, but they're meant to keep spiders away if you leave them on the windowsill. So Natalie tried to find some conkers, but to no avail. The trees had lost their leaves, and all of the conkers had long since disappeared into the sticky pockets of schoolboys who weren't actually allowed to play with them in case someone lost an eye. Maybe it was acorns anyway, Penny had said, or pine cones, something like that. So Natalie stocked up on acorns and pine cones, which she bought in bulk in an online auction. She scattered them throughout the house on windowsills and mantelpieces, on shelves and in cupboards, until every room was filled with pine cones and acorns. But it didn't work and Natalie still found herself reduced to a nervous wreck every time one of the eight-legged freaks made its way into her house to lounge in the lounge or to swallow flies in the dining room. Natalie had had enough. She called one exterminator after another and welcomed a seemingly endless procession of middle-aged men into her house, but it was as though the arachnids knew they were coming. Whenever the bug men came round, they'd be lucky to find as much as a daddy long legs. They set traps, but the spiders seemed to know they were there. For everyone that was caught or killed, a dozen seemed to take its place, and eventually the exterminator stopped taking her calls, as did her friends and then her family. Then, one day, everything changed. Natalie saw an ad in the back of a gossip mag, which would change her life forever. Buy the Fox 3000, it said. This revolutionary new ultrasonic device uses the latest technology to repel insects and arachnids. No home is complete without one. Be the envy of your family and friends. Only fifty nine ninety nine plus postage and packaging. Buy now while stocks last. So Natalie bought a Foxo 3000 and waited impatiently for the postman to arrive. When he finally showed three weeks later, she was slapped with a customs charge, but Natalie didn't care. It was worth it. She hurriedly unpacked the Foxo 3000, plugged it in beside her alarm clock, placed it on her bedside table and turned it on. The ultrasound was ultrasonic, so she couldn't hear it, but she could hear a low hum as the machine came to life. The humming sound soon had the same effect as a light thunderstorm outside the window, of rain hitting the canvas of a tent or of waves lapping at the shore. She found it relaxing and she was soon unable to sleep without it. And best of all, the spiders disappeared too. That was until the night of the power cut. Natalie was half asleep in the darkness when she noticed it. The humming of the ultrasound machine faded into nothingness and the sudden silence was more noticeable than a car backfiring outside the window. When she opened her eyes, there was nothing but darkness. Her heavy blinds cut off all the light from outside, and even the muted red digits on her alarm clock had disappeared. Natalie reached for her phone, which she'd left on the bedside table, and she instantly recoiled when she found it. There was movement, an unwelcome scuttling, and the tickling sensation of something brushing against her hand. She screamed, withdrew her hand, thought about the situation for a second, and then reached for the phone again. This time she managed to pick it up and she hurriedly unlocked it and booted up the torch app that she used when she was the last person to leave the office and had to go around from room to room in the half light, checking for ghosts and crackheads. At first the beam of light shone in her eyes and blinded her, but she swung the phone around to scan the room and immediately wished that she hadn't. She saw spiders, thousands upon thousands of them, spiders of all shapes and sizes, all swarming all over each other. They covered the walls, the carpet, the curtains and the ceiling. They covered the bedside table and the duvet. They fell down from the ceiling and landed in her hair. They swarmed beneath the sheets and covered her arms and legs. They were f everywhere. Natalie opened her mouth to scream, but no sound came out. The last thing she saw was the last thing she ever wanted to see. Every day was different to the forensic pathologists, but that rainy Tuesday in February took the biscuit. It should have been routine. A woman in her early 40s had been found dead in her apartment of a suspected heart attack, an open and shut case quite literally. But when they made the first incision, they found no internal organs. Instead, the torso was filled with thousands of tiny spiders, living in her hollowed out corpse like it was a cupboard beneath the stairs. They liked the darkness.